This is a quick lecture on responsive logos. We talked about these way back at like lecture one or so um, when we were first just talking about what are logos. So now that we are going to create some responsive logos or some logo alternates to our final logo, let's come back around and relook at what these are and a couple different strategies to create them. As digital content became as important as, and now maybe even more important than traditional media, like print media, there has been a definite shift in how we should approach corporate logos. For decades and decades, corporate identity has been seen as sacred. The great designers of the 1950s and 60s, your Saul Bass, your Paul Rand, who invented this terminology and this whole idea of corporate identity, had a very firm belief in you do not touch the logo. You never change the logo ever, ever, ever. Consistency is key. A consumer has to be able to see a logo on a TV commercial and then walk into a store and find that same logo on the shelf. However, nowadays, again, I think consumers are a lot more savvy um, and I think people are a little bit smarter than maybe those guys are giving them credit for. And corporate, the corporate powers that be are finally coming around to understanding that a brand is more than a logo and a logo is more than a brand. When you think about a brand like Nike, you probably picture its logo. But are you thinking of the entire logo? Just the swoosh? What color is it? No matter which variation of the Nike logo that you would show anybody out in the general public, that person would probably recognize it as Nike. And that's true of most high profile logos. So the idea behind responsive logos is harnessing those key aspects of what makes a brand's logo unique and memorable, but paring it down in a very elegant and efficient way to match the context or the screen size that the logo is being used on. So I think this premise is something that we should definitely not only be cognizant of, but practice doing. I think that you're gonna see a lot more brands continue to evolve their logos to make them more digitally friendly so that they can be used on various screen sizes so that they can be seen you know, in a more simplified version and still be recognizable. The essence of the logo is still prevalent, whether or not you're familiar with the brand or not, right? Like this example, I think is really great because the lion, it's a simple logo. There's a lion face and it says Premier League. And as it gets distilled down, you're retaining the key visual element, the lion face and Premier League eventually gets abbreviated and then dropped. So Joe Harrison was, is a designer and he published an experiment back in 2014, so six years ago, where he took famous brands and imagined how these logos could adapt to have various screen sizes. It seems ridiculous that six years ago, this was really cutting edge, but that just goes to remind you how fast technology changes, how fast the adapt adoption of various types of devices has really affected branding. So these are just two of the examples that show how the logos that are increasingly simpler for smaller screens, right? So we're distilling down the essence of these logos to make them still understandable as they get smaller and smaller. These are four more of his examples. And a quote from Joe is, responsive logos is a project that explores how brands might adapt for today's 
multiple devices, and screen resolutions. By applying responsive design principles to individual elements of a logo and stripping out detail in relation to screen size, a more legible and appropriate logo could be displayed. The concept aims to move branding away from fixed, rigid guidelines into a more flexible and contextual system. And I think you have absolutely seen the adoption of that thinking in most brands today, where think about like in website design, if you look at a web page on your computer screen versus a tablet versus your phone, the information and the layout of the content adjusts to accommodate the smaller and smaller screen sizes. Um, and similarly, the logo oftentimes will adjust as well. It might not change visually, but it will definitely change you know, the size of the logo in proportion to the content and maybe even the location of the logo in relation to the content. So here's one example of a um, alcohol brand. So looking at this example, it's not always about just removing more and more pieces of your logo, but it's also about making sure that the resulting mark still feels on brand. So you can see here that the designer has adjusted not only the line weights and, some and at certain points he's turned strokes to fills as the symbol is reducing in size. This just helps clean up the visual information to ensure we have a very elegant result. So you can kind of see the zoom in on the right of how that A is being tweaked as it gets smaller and being refined while still feeling identical basically. And this is the Dunkin' Donut slide again, just to go back and relook at it because Dunkin' is a good example of using um, the concept of responsive logos in their branding. So they just redid their logo again, not too long ago where they dropped the donuts and now they're just called Dunkin'. And so you can see here, the full logo is that bottom right hand logo, it says Dunkin'. Above it, you can see they have different size coffee cups. So they're using their logo and two alternates for the three different size of cups. So I thought that was a really unique way of using these logo alternates to respond to the size in which the logo has available, right? So the same thing. So like on their store rendering of their new concept design, you can see they've got the full Duncan on the website, the logo is on the far left, it's the Duncan logo again, and then on there, like Facebook, so their social, the little social icon is the smallest one, the DNKN. And then on the bottom was a mock-up that they did for the, what their advertising is going to look like. And again, you can see they're using all three logo options with these different like posters within a bigger poster. So you can sort of see how they're using their three distinct logo options in various ways. Okay, so what types of logo alternates should I create? Um, so we are being, I am asking you guys to make three responsive logos or three logo alternates to your final color logo. So here are just three things to consider when deciding what kind of alternates would be appropriate for your logo. First one is an orientation alternate. So if your primary logo is very horizontal or very vertical, it would benefit from an alternate version that is more square. So the Missouri Botanical Garden is a great example of this. Their primary logo, the one that they prefer everyone use all the time, is the top one. So it's obviously super horizontal. That doesn't work in every instance, right? Because the wider your logo, the less vertical height it's taking up. So as that logo gets smaller, it's going to become very tiny. So it's helpful to have these alternate logos. They have the Missouri Botanical Garden is stacked 
There's one where it's stacked to the right of the symbol and one where it's stacked below the symbol. And you can see how that affects the overall shape of the logo and thus help somebody make the logo the appropriate size proportionately to whatever it's being put on or put with by using these different alternates. And then they just use their symbol on like social platforms when it's super tiny. So you can see how while they would prefer you have the long primary horizontal logo, they have given you a less horizontal option and then even like a square or a vertical option, and then finally the symbol. Another thing you could consider is smaller spaces. Thinking about print versus web versus tablet versus social media icons, that's a lot of different sizes for one logo, which is exactly what Joe Harrison's examples were exploring. So you can definitely take that approach as well, simplifying as your logo shrinks. The last option, you can think about breaking apart your symbol. If you did design a symbol logo, would be the first caveat to this option, you could util utilize just the visual, just the symbol, and just the typeset name as different alternates to your logo to allow for greater flexibility. And I like this example from that you saw early in the term, um, this Fennec logo, because you can see here they're using the full logo on the letterhead. The envelope is just the typeset name. The premium items like the button is just the symbol. So again, you can break apart the logo and use the different pieces for different instances where it makes the most sense. And then your bonus fourth idea is maybe you can come up with something more creative, like our friends at Google. So this is straight off of the Google branding page, Google site. So they have their logo type, the Google, the sans serif logo that has the different colors. Then they have these dots as an alternate, and it says, the, def the reason behind it is it's a dynamic distillation of the logo type for interactive, assistive, and transitional moments. And then they have their, just their G, the Google G, which is a compact version of the Google logo that works in small contexts. So again, they have given you the rationale behind what those four dots mean, and it seems very obvious. We interact with Google all the time. We're all very familiar with those four dots and that they represent Google. But a designer had to come up with those four dots. Why are they dots? Why do they look like that? Why are they those colors? And you could definitely come up with a, an all, a similar type of creative solution for your responsive set as well. So hopefully that helps, um, helps you start to think about these responsive logos or these logo alternatives that you're gonna make for your logo. Again, they're gonna obviously be very specific to your logo design. Um, and there's a lot of options out there. There's not one correct answer to anybody's design. So do a bunch of options, explore it, think about how your logo could be used in different contexts and how it might need to be altered to look its best in those contexts. Okay, good luck.